Last, but by no means least, we are going to hear from Bartosz Nowoski. I probably did not get that right. Um, from the head office of the State Archives in Poland, who will uh, talk to us about the integrated archival information system, SOSIA, and its implication for archival descriptive and reference practices in the Polish State Archives. So Bartosz, please. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bartosz Nowożycki. I am a senior specialist at the ho uh, head office of the Polish uh, State Archives. Uh, my uh, government agency supervises uh, the whole network of the State Archives in Poland, all of uh, the 33 uh, State Archives. So I'd, I would like to discuss the implications of introducing the uh, integrated archival uh, information system. Uh, it's called ZOSIA in Polish. I would just really leave it with an abbreviation, an acronym. Uh, so uh, the whole idea of using computers in Polish archives started around 1970s when the head office uh, created a commission for a uh, committee for informatics and archives. And uh, this committee over the years uh, try to e examine the usage of uh, mainframes uh, computers in state archives to facilitate the work, the work of, uh, of these, those archives. Uh, over the years, they uh, determined uh, three major, uh, major uh, goals of utilizing computers, which were uh, to cope with uh, steadily increasing expectations uh, for reference services, um, increasing uh, access to records, and improving management of archives. So, uh, sorry uh, for, for the presentation. Around uh, 1987, Professor uh, Bogdan Ryszewski at the, uh, from the University in Torun um, assembled a team to um, study the application of another type of computers. It was uh, personal computers. And uh, eventually he, he came up with the idea of creating an archival description standard, which was called uh, FOPAR. And then, based on this standard, creating an archival description uh, system. So, uh, this system uh, haven't passed the uh, testing phase. It remained only as a research project. It was introduced in, in, uh, uh, in uh, several universities, but it, the Polish State Archives chose other way. They didn't want to develop this system, and they chose the way of utilizing various uh, databases uh, in hope that one day that they can merge the, um, them together. So, in 1993, uh, they created one of the first uh, databases. Uh, it was a database for found level description. This is a version uh, version uh, 6.2, but it's uh, you can see the it's not user friendly. It's hideous. It was based on Microsoft Access. The uh, previous versions were worse. So this one was used to to uh, to describe only the uh, uh, the uh, holdings on the phones level. So you could uh, you can see the uh, it, it's only in Polish. So <laughs> you can see the the dates, uh, the the extent of the collection, the name of the collection or font, and. Uh, this this one was uh, a mandatory uh, mandatory database obligatory database for all the state archives and later on uh, we prepared another hideous thing uh, also in microsoft access called isa uh, this database uh, was uh, constructed in order to uh, describe uh, units describe the fonts on uh, fonts and uh, uh, collections and units so it was it was intended to uh, to give us an uh, electronic uh, finding aids in this case inventory uh, so so it was the first uh, first um, first uh, major breakthrough in our our uh, descriptive and arrangement practice because we can do it do them uh, using uh, computers so in 2007 uh, the head office of uh, Polish State Archives decided to start a project involving a design of integrated archival information system. It's called uh, ZOSIA, a Zintegrowany System Ar Informacji Archiwalnej in Polish. And, uh, oh, sorry, I forgot to, to mention that uh, at some point uh, we published the data from uh, SESAM and ESA online. But the problem was that they were uh, copied to the central uh, server once a year. So the, if, it, if they were copied in January, so after several months, they 
weren't up to date, so it was hard to find anything new. So you have to wait a whole year to see whether the new collections were added or, or, or something, or, or, or description of the existing ones was, uh, was, um, was uh, done. So Zosia uh, was intended to be a system for the whole uh, for the whole archives network, and not only for the state uh, archives, but for uh, also for private institutions. So, if someone wanted to to manage their uh, their holdings, they could uh, ask um, state archives, and we will provide them with uh, with the uh, uh, with uh, the access to Zosia. Uh, Zosia uh, was based on open uh, open format and open uh, sources IT solutions. Uh, it was meant to be a software independent, user friendly, um, cost efficient, and requiring, requiring non uh, expensive IT infrastructure system. Uh, the final version was uh, 1.0 was introduced in 2010, but uh, in the meantime, uh, in November of 2008, um, Zosia was, uh, there, there was an um, interface, online interface for Zosia created. I will show you later this interface. Uh, which uh, was, uh, uh, it was interface for users and uh, over the next few years uh, there was a functionality added to this interface allowing us to put a digitalized copies of the records. So uh, if was something was digitalized, user can see uh, this uh, uh, using Shukai Varhiva uh, search archives. So, uh, uh, Zosia uh, was intended to be not only a descriptive tool, uh, the tool that facilitates description of our uh, fonts and collections, but only, but also a tool uh, that will help us manage the holdings. Uh, it uh, it has a one of one of the uh, the main um, uh, parts of this system is a. Uh, uh, it, it replaces the, the older registries. It, it can uh, manage acquisition, withdrawals, uh, uh, so it, it helps us to manage uh, the, the whole uh, holdings and to give us uh, an idea what do we have, where, someone, where something was transferred, and how many records we have. Uh, we can prepare a various uh, reports based on the search engine, which is the third main uh, part of uh, this uh, system. So it, it enables us to uh, for uh, it enables us to prepare a multi-level description, and it's always up to date because every data uh, that it's uh, input in the in, in the system is visible to other users. Uh, the data are stored in the national uh, digital archives in Warsaw on on their ser their server. So uh, it, it it ensures that the data from all the st uh, state archives are integrated and are up to date. So we, you don't have to wait a whole year to see if there's something new, if there's something, uh, there's, if there's been uh, some corrections made to the descriptions. Uh, this is, uh, this is the, the, I don't know whether you can see or read this, this uh, slides. Uh, it's, I wanted to show you how, uh, how, does, how, how, uh, how Zosia looks uh, from the point of view of the archivist. Here you have, uh, for example, here you have a description of the font. It's a Ministry of Internal Affairs in Warsaw, pre-war ministry. And here you have additional information about this, uh, this, uh, this font. Uh, you can see, uh, you can uh, even describe objects. You can upload the, the digital copies of the objects and describe them whenever, uh, using the uh, fixed set of, of data. Uh, so, uh, Oh, and here's the uh, online search engine. Uh, it's in English. Uh, you can search through the whole structure of the holdings and even use filters. Uh, we are planning to, to um, introduce a new, a new new version with a more user-friendly um, interface. Uh, here's what I mentioned before. Uh, you can see if the, the unit, record unit, was digitalized, you can see uh, the description dates, and then you have uh, you have digital copies of the records. So introdu introducing uh, Zosia to the state archives in 2008 changed our practice. We were used to uh, to utilize uh, 
let's say a card version of uh, card. We prepared the preliminary inventories on cards. Then t uh, they were t uh, transferred, uh, typewritten, and then uh, stored in in the research room. And uh, one copy was was uh, was uh, treated as a backup copy. So uh, after you. Uh, Introducing ESA and SESAM, archivists, start, archivists started to, um, to change their perspective, their view on, on archival description. But Zosia will be mandatory starting 2018. So every, every, arch, uh, every archivist will have to use this tool, ensuring that uh, the description is consistent the, uh, uh, and the da data are up to date. So. Uh, we are preparing right now a new set of rules and regulations governing um, archival description and arrangement. The previous ones derived from a 1960 set of rules, so they were like 40 years or more. And uh, the reality changed, the technology changed. So in every provision, uh, uh, starting from, uh, from uh, gathering uh, and registering of, of collections and, fond and, and fonts, you will have to use uh, Zosia. Zosia will be a primary tool for all of the uh, archives management functions and uh, man uh, holding, uh, uh, management, uh, holding, uh, management of holdings. So uh, this will change the view, uh, the, the way that we describe. We are trying to uh, uh, adjust our uh, set of practices to this system. So uh, in the future, everything will be done, hopefully next year, through Zosia. And uh, what is more important that we, uh, the, uh, last year we started a, a program, it's called a retro conversion of the old finding aids. We are trying to, uh, to uh, put, uh, to ingest the, the, the uh, old finding aids digi uh, by OCR, OCR technology or, or just uh, manually into this system in order to give the users a full, uh, full extent of the information about uh, holdings. So uh, in my opinion, this type of, uh, of system will uh, deliver state archives from the limitation of the traditional inventories prepared uh, uh, on paper or just uh, disseminated as a printout from the previous uh, ESA uh, database. Uh, I, I encourage you to try to use uh, search archives. Uh, there's a lot of uh, records there uh, that might interest you and uh, or even descriptions. It will facilitate uh, reference services uh, a lot. Uh, archivists have a different version of a search engine, more detailed, and they are able, for example, if you have a research request, they are, they are able to print a report say, uh, saying where you can find a certain a set of information or the, I don't know, the, the, the uh, birth certificate of your grandfather or something like that. So uh, currently we are, uh, we are uh, at the point when everything will change next year in, in Polish archives. This is a first step for, uh, for uh, uh, electronic, uh, introducing electronic uh, inventories and uh, changing the descriptive practice. Uh, next step uh, will be um, the, uh, the, the archive of electronic records. Uh, it will be uh, integrated with Zosia, hopefully, and it will allow uh, for ingest, uh, to, to, uh, it will uh, allow us to capture the records from records management systems, describe them, and put them uh, here, so you can not only see the traditional paper records, but uh, also the uh, di born digital records uh, in this. Uh, in this uh, system. Uh, maybe what's more important, uh, Zosia is uh, nearly, uh, mm, nearly, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, it was based on the international standards, I mean ICA standards, uh, but it does not allow uh, for import uh, of data in compliance with uh, AAD, 
uh, AAC and AAG, but it does allow for a batch uh, import of data in CSV uh, format. So we use this uh, format for, to, uh, to convert the old data from ESA, for example, and SESAM and batch, batch uh, and using a batch, batch uh, import, uh, put them in, into, into Zosha. So uh, this is the future of Polish archives. Uh, this system is in constant development. Uh, it's, it is really something new. Uh, this is, uh, let's say it's a major, more mature model. There will be some uh, functionalities uh, added to this system in order to, uh, to um, meet the, the rules, uh, rules about uh, description and uh, arrangement provided by the head office. So this will hopefully uh, create some whole new level of uh, of, uh, of arch archival practice in Poland. So thank you for, uh, for, uh, very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, I would gladly ask, uh, answer them. Thank you, Bartosz. Uh, since you didn't use all your yeah. minutes, we will I will actually allow uh, questions. Yeah. All the way in the back. Thank you very much for sharing uh, your experience in Poland. Uh, it really sounds great that um, for such a big country as Poland, you managed to make um, a coherent system. I uh, just want to ask, what is the attitude of municipalities to take on board the system? And also how, because the success of each system is how people use it and um, if they use it correctly. Uh, and the also if you will, are planning to do any audits on how do they implement it. Uh, the, the previous uh, databases, ESA and CESAM, uh, they, one was obligatory, one, one was facultative. And uh, despite the, the fixed, uh, fixed uh, set of data that you have to put into these uh, databases, there was some difference in, uh, in practice between state archives. And we hope that this, this, uh, this new system, Zosha, would limit the, the differences between uh, the practice because we will limit the uh, number of fields when you can put uh, fields when you can put words. In, we will use more fields uh, like checkbox or if you want to to see the, the uh, to, to put in the information about the type of the record, you will have a list. So we can just choose. Uh, the problem with all of these uh, systems is uh, some kind of. Uh, uh, negative attitude of older archivists because they are used to uh, practice based on the uh, paper uh, analog uh, methods and now they have to uh, get used to this but uh, they are learning and uh, the Zosha is known for the from the version 1.0 uh, till 1.1 uh, uh, I think uh, it's known and it's been used and tested by archivists for several years so uh, they are getting uh, quite good at it, and uh, moreover, uh, many many public uh, institutions, many um, institutions, many public archives uh, want to use Zosha because they don't have any uh, type of uh, holdings management tool and description tool. Uh, so this is uh, it's being used more often, and uh, it, I think very successful. If you look at it, we have more than 20 million uh, records, uh, description, fonts, descriptions, and copies there. So uh, we're trying to cover as much uh, of the holdings extent as possible. So if that answers your question. <laughs> And uh, oh, you, you asked about uh, the, the municipalities, right? Uh, this tool is only for state archives. Uh, the archives uh, that are in the towns or cities, uh, they don't have to use this tool, they can. This one is obligatory for every state archive. So uh, state archives, uh, maybe, maybe uh, if you want to know about more about state archives, just visit uh, WW Archiva. Uh, if you want, I uh, just send me an email, I will, provide you with an information. So uh, I wanted to, to show you search archives and how does it work. Uh, 
Okay, so for example, if you want to find something about London, you just put London. And here you have not all uh, titles of, re of, of files and fonts are translated, but some of them are. So you can, for example, uh, you can see uh, uh, there are, uh, the blue ones are units, so here you can, uh, items. Uh, Maybe you can you can use other different filters. Maybe you can you want to find a record unit that d pertains to London. So here you go. Here you go. You have a pictorial plan of London. Uh, so uh, it's usable in English, more usable in Polish. But uh, it it it's it really uh, you couldn't done it uh, before because you would have to uh, check uh, the the data about the phones on uh, the head office website once a year they were updated so or, or you, can, you you needed to go to the certain archive in Poland so here the the you you have all the integrated data and it's uh, over the the years it will expand to cover as much as possible I don't know how when we will reach a hundred percent but it's a starting point I mean 20 millions it's it's a at least good for a start. So thank you again for your attention and <laughs> thank you. And this was actually the last presentation, so that means that our conference is coming to an end now. And I promise you, I will not try to summarize uh, the conference. But I will say that I'm really impressed with the, the variety of insights and perspectives that has been presented to us during these uh, three days. And I think it's safe to say that the conference has, in fact, facilitated that much needed talk across disciplines and across institutions and across borders that I was talking about in my welcome address on Wednesday morning. So I would like to say a very big thank you to all the speakers for being willing to share your insights and perspectives and your expertise. And also a big thank you to all you delegates for being uh, so active, participating with questions, with tweets, with networking, so that you actually made the conference the network, networking and community event that we're supposed to be. The next triennial conference will be in three years, that pretty much goes without saying. We don't know the location uh, yet. And I guess all that's left to say is uh, thank you all very much for coming here to Brighton. Have a safe journey back home and see you in Estonia or at any other future DLM event. Thank you. Thank you.